The fate of e-pharmacies in India is under a cloud of uncertainty. The High Courts of Delhi and Madras have placed a ban on the sale of medicines online citing privacy and safety concerns. The courts have also directed the central government to come up with regulations to allow e-pharmacies to operate in India. Now these rulings of course come as a big blow to the online pharma space with e-pharmacies having raised over a hundred million dollars in funding this year. So are these concerns justified and what is the future of the e-pharma space? To discuss all this and more, I'm joined today by Adiji Shah, who is our Secretary General of the Indian Pharmaceutical Alliance. We also have Dharmil Sheth, who is co-founder of Farm Easy, an online pharmacy. And joining us from Chennai is uh, Mr. K.K. Selvin, the General Secretary of the Tamil Nadu Chemists and Druggists Association, who are the petitioners against the dr sale of drugs online. So we have all sides of this debate today which will be represented on the show. Uh, let's begin with Mr. Shet. Um, how big of a blow are these uh, two orders uh, from the Madras and the Delhi High Courts and uh, what does it mean for the entire space and your business as well? Sure. So uh, there was uh, an interim order passed by the Chennai government, uh, Chennai High Court uh, uh, back in October, November uh, start and we intervened uh, in the PIL and uh, the intent is to clarify our model for how it operates. Obviously, you know, there are uh, good players, there might be some bad players, but the intention is to, you know, discriminate between uh, the, the legit players and the non-legit players. And I think that's what we've been, uh, you know, actively uh, trying to do even with the regulators. We've been actively involved while the draft regulations we were being framed. And I think we are nearly there in terms of getting the uh, framework for online pharmacies to operate in India. Uh, yeah, uh, but meanwhile, Mr. Seth, meanwhile, meanwhile, pharmacies have been operating. Uh, whether yeah. they, they already have been operating, they're already servicing customers. And these are some very uh, serious concerns that uh, the High Court has uh, talked about. Uh, they've talked about uh, validity of prescriptions. They've talked about the right medication reaching patients. Um, uh, do you Correct. think that this is a big lacune uh, in the way uh, companies so such as yours have been functioning so far? Fundamentally, uh, the model, the way it operates is uh, it's it's a channel of communication between the pharmacy and the patients. Uh, the patient, uh, you know, uploads a prescription, sends it to the retailer, the retailer verifies, validates and then, you know, delivers the order. The retailer already is under, governed by the current Drugs and Cosmetics Act and licensed by the state FDA. So there is no point of, you know, uh, not having any validity of the model. Uh, we are completely compliant with the current law. Uh, not having sort of, uh, you know, the word online uh, makes it seem that it might be legal, but that's not the case. Even Sedesco has responded to the Madras High Court. The regulators have, have gone on record stating that uh, the model that online pharmacies have, it's not an illegal model. Okay. So uh, uh, we, Selman, we just want to clarify. Yeah, we will just want we will want to clarify with the court. We are going to the court and we'll be appealing to hear us out. I'm sure understand the model how it is, and I think you know there should be a positive outcome by the end of the. Process. Sure, that's the legal process, but we're discussing the core issues here yeah. of a different uh, model of business, uh, and uh, yeah. this is also interesting because we've seen this kind of a tussle in uh, almost every other retail space where uh, an online player has come in and, in a sense, challenged uh, the uh, traditional players. Mr. Selvin, is that the case here? That your brick and mortar chemists are feeling threatened by the this new model of delivery of medication and uh, you fear that they will come in with their deeper discounts and eat away into your business is that at the core of this entire debate I think uh, yes. the question is for Mr. Selvin, Selvin please the question is for Mr. Selvin please yeah the question is for Mr. Selvin please it's actually a fear of can I talk right yes Mr. Shet the question is for Mr. Selvin please please come in Mr. Selvin shall I yes Okay, fine. First of all, uh, we have to welcome modernization always. There is no doubt about it. But when moderate, we are welcoming the modernization, but anyhow, we should not violate any law in any country. 
in which country we are living we should obey the law and regulations of that country that's what the first thing all the citizens should do particularly business people should not violate any law whether there is any law provision for till today online pharmacy either any law is there no law is there for any online pharmacy any uploading the prescriptions in the web portal uh, or dispensing the uh, medicine or sale sale is happening through the uh, uh, online there is no law provision first of all there should be a law provision otherwise there simply all the uh, all the online players are telling that draft rule is there draft rule is whether draft rule is a rule that's not a rule draft rule is a draft rule only so that's what our uh, honorable high court of chennai uh, as they given here a very good uh, Uh, judgment yeah, mr seven i understand that today, i understand that the but then the question uh. is where, how are all of these companies functioning for so long it's not yesterday that these companies started functioning how much to answer we had made a lot of complaints in lot of various places of pan india level in more states we have uh, given you so many complaints but how this is what our government should say that's you should ask in the body of the government peoples only you have to ask to the dgca and okay. uh, my, my, my specific question to you mr selvan is you made the point about that there is no law and that may change tomorrow the government may come out with a regulation will your concerns then go yeah. away or are your if concerns is, deeper if there is tomorrow a law see, saying that we allow uploading of prescriptions will all your concerns go away if law is allowing to uploading the prescription we will be the largest player in pharma chain in pan india and as well as in universal level also what are your prime concerns today is your concern really that the safety of patients may be at risk or is the concern that e pharma sites could take away your business what what you are asking is your real concern that these online sites could take away your business no no we are not worried about that we will if, if the government is going to be permit the law if they are going to uh, give you a uh, guidance and law for the online pharmacy means we are the very big online pharma in in, in universal level because we are the 8.5 lakh chemists sir we are unitedly we are doing business and we are all the all of our members which is uh, under the all india chemist and drugist association then no doubt, doubt that we are the single largest online pharma player in the universe okay so mr shet we are ready to sure mr shet so do you want to respond to that uh, here mr selvan says that uh, once there is a law everything is legitimate and this association of chemists will also go online yeah yeah so absolutely and in fact uh, you know the model that we have we in fact work with the brick and mortar stores so uh, there are close to about uh, 200 uh, retail pharmacies that you know a lot of online pharmacies uh, would be working with uh, i i think more uh, the number would be close to about 500 so and it's growing uh, but again you know we are uh, less than a percent of the entire industry so uh, it's it's i i don't think it's uh, you know something that uh, we are snatching away the business i think it's fear of the unknown uh, we we really are you know always asking uh, fact the association folks or the regulators that what is the problem that they have because the core is always missing we try to sort of dive deeper into the fundamental issue but it's difficult to understand because uh even as per uh, the current uh, law of the land uh, as per uh, you know our model i think we are compliant with the it act and as per the drugs and cosmetics act as well we are not uh, flouting any of the laws so okay i want to bring uh, in i want to bring in mr dg shah into this conversation uh, because mr shah uh, the pharmaceutical producers association has been involved uh, with their inputs even when these draft regulations came out in august uh, how do you see uh, this entire debate in this fight right now so invariably e-commerce has moved at a space faster than regulators can catch up with it not only in pharma but in all spheres and uh, that's where the innovation takes place uh, if you depend on regulators to frame a law first and then set up the business 
the word doesn't work like that. And we have seen this uh, in all the major innovations that has taken place word around. So we need to recognize that. Secondly, we welcome any competition in the field of distribution because that gives us a consumer a better choice mm. and companies a wider space to operate in. Uh, experience has shown that uh, brick and mortar stores have boycotted companies' products, uh, have forced companies to uh, seek their approval for a product launch or for appointing a stockist or a yeah. removing a stockist. Now, all this would be balanced by e-pharmacies. But e-pharmacy must necessarily address the patient concerns. And regulator concerns should only be patient-centric. Now, what is it that really matters? What matters is privacy of data. Mm. What matters is uh, a correct prescription being honored. Uh, there are also instances where uh, e-pharmacy has a doctor on his payroll and uh, get it substituted uh, by doctor um. signing the prescription. Now, till we have a product quality which is uniform across from all manufacturers, this substitution will not help patient. It could in, in fact be injurious to patient. No, so, so that, that, that's an important point. I think I, I should come to Mr. Shade on that point. This authenticity of prescription is definitely a concern and an issue, Mr. Shade, which the industry so far, and it's a very small nascent industry, but there is no clear answer. How do you know what the patient is uploading is a real prescription or not? How do you know it's yeah, not the same a, prescription being used again and again, or there's no duplication? So that's a kind of uh, question. So, in fact, uh, so uh, that's that's uh, you know something which uh, not just the online channel, but online offline together, we need a solution to the same problem uh, because uh, you know people can actually buy medicines uh, maybe multiple times over the same prescription over the counter, or it can be online pharmacies and. That is something even the the health ministry has uh, sort of thought over it, and there are solutions they've proposed, which will require you know a common platform or a seamless flow of information from the doctor to the pharmacy, hmm. wherein the prescription doesn't go to the hands of the patient. Now, unfortunately, that requires a lot of technology adoption by the doctors and by the supply chain as well. Uh, even in the US where the prescription doesn't go in the hands of the patient, there is a different problem of doctor shopping. So people go out and shop for prescriptions and then they purchase medicine. So uh, this is a very, very, you know, genuine problem, which, uh, you know, only if we move online or bring in a lot of digital sort of technology adoption across various stakeholders, only then we'll be able to address this. Yeah. There is no other solution right now. Um, Mr. Shah, the other big uh, concern and I see as a reason for this clash between online and offline uh, pharmacies is the discount factor, isn't it? I mean, we've not talked about it so far, but the fact is that a lot of online uh, companies bring in new customers as saying that we'll give you up to a 15, 20% discount on your bills. And people with chronic illnesses who need to reorder expensive medicines again and again are definitely want to avail of that. See, what has already happened in the market, uh, that the moment e-pharmacies came in, uh, in the larger cities, uh, the brick and mortar stores have started giving discounts to select customers on a repeat purchases. Yeah. So, the patient has already seen the benefit of competition coming in. Uh, this will continue to happen because uh, there is a margin of 10 and 20 percent between the wholesaler and retailer which manufacturer gives. Hmm. Uh, out of this 30 percent margin, uh, e-pharmacies are willing to part with uh, half of it and keep only 15 percent. So the norm is 15 percent uh, discount e-pharmacies start giving to the patient. 
Now this would definitely hurt the offline stores. And uh, though Mr. I mean, uh, Mr. Selvin? Uh, Mr. Selvin said that that's not real issue. Yeah. The real issue, the business issue lies there. Yeah, so I want to ask Mr. Selvin this question because I've learned this from Mr. Shah right now. There's a 30% discount that drug manufacturers are giving chemists. Why aren't yeah, we seeing uh, it? Uh, Why aren't we seeing DG it? Shah rightly, uh, DG Shah rightly said. Uh, so why that uh, out of 30% e-permits are ready to go 15% of the discount? Yeah, same thing happened when Coca-Cola and Pepsi was introduced in India about 20 years back. When they are came, entered into the India, that Coca-Cola, uh, which was uh, reduced his price lesser than our, uh, which which brand, Gold Spot or Limca, uh, lesser than 50 paise. I think that time 2 rupees 50 paise was the bottle cost. So they have sold the, their drink for the 2 rupees. So entirely they demolished all the Indian peoples, uh, throw, uh, they, they may ran away from all the Indian peoples from the market. So they acquired all the all the Indian market. Now, unfortunately, we are paying one rupee more when we are going to purchase the uh, Coca-Cola or Pepsi or same thing, uh, something cool drinks, we are paying for the, for the stillness of for refrigeration purpose, we are paying one rupee more. So this is what is going to be happen in India. Then no, why Elvin, Coca Cola and Pepsi is state. not the right comparison. These are medicines, life saving why? medicines in why? some this time. Is what going to happen. This no, all the multinational uh, My the question is simple. Are you passing on the discounts? Let me get Mr. One second. Let me get Mr. Shaitan. Is is this calculation with Mr. Shah has explained the correct one that there is a thirty percent discount which comes from the manufacturer to the pharmacy? Uh, you guys, and by you guys, I mean industry-wide, are ready to part with up to 15% to lure in new customers. You're still sitting so, on 15%. Uh, so, uh, uh, I, I would say that, uh, you know, as per, uh, you know, our understanding, the supply chain uh, gets approximately 30 to 35% of discounts or margins, I would say. Uh, there are offline stores who are giving a 20% discount, like, uh, you know, the largest pharmacy in India, pharmacy chain in India, they are providing a 20% discount in Bangalore, Chennai and Hyderabad. Uh, there are some online pharmacies who are giving 15%, 18%, 20% discount. So that's the business strategy. Obviously, you know, if, if it doesn't make uh, business sense, then these would all collapse, right? Uh, uh, because, you know, certain uh, pro processes and, you know, practices are bringing in a lot of efficiencies, only then there are these discounts which people are able to pass on to the customers in the form of savings. So, I, I don't think it is, uh, you know, sort of a, a bad strategy or a strategy to kill others, but it's just about how efficient uh, no one I, is I mean to, i mean i mean your, your strategy is very interesting at uh, some point but at the end of the day you would care about what uh, your customers are getting i mean we care about what the customers are getting and mr selvan you will have to explain this a little bit more this coca cola pepsi comparison will not fly beyond a point yeah. if there is a big fat uh, margin and there is a player willing to come and give it. Some chemists do give it if they know the customer for a long time. But it shouldn't be a matter of choice uh, or random selection of who will get this discount. If the discount is there, someone is willing to give it, then it's only fair that consumers slash patients have the option, don't you think? See, here in India, pharma for especially for pharma, our government is fixing the margins and the government is every year they are fixing the price for the each and every medicines. So here, what is happening for wholesaler, they are giving 10% margin, then retailers as well as they are giving 20% margin. Uh, well, we are giving to our customers also up to 10% or maximum 12% according to the purchase level and according to the customers. We are also giving operating the uh, uh, discounts uh, according to the customers. but. Where is the availability? We are serving uh, around about 6.5 retail chemists are serving across India. We are not uh, in the purpose of only earning. We are serving also with with, the, with our customers. So yeah. even night, 12 o'clock, in the, in the remote village of India, 
like in Kashmir or Kanyakumari. We are ready to, uh, they are coming to our house also, they are uh, tapping our uh, doors and we are going to open yeah. the shops. In, in no, I mean, that's, that's a good point. Going, the delivery and services. Yeah. If yeah. these people are going to be tied, but they are delivering no at home. I don't know, Mr. Shah, you want to come in on this? It's a, it's a strange thing because um, the point and one of the lure of ordering medicines online is because someone will deliver it to your house. You don't have to go to the chemist or call and hope that they have someone free to send it to you. It's 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 very, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's not something you know for sure. Here with an online pharmacy, it's transactional. You know that you're paying for that service as well. Welcome. But uh, more important there is Mr. B Selvin made it uh, clear. Reaching in the remotest corner of the India, yeah. a medicine is a great service which uh, the 7.5 lakhs chemists have provided to the country and to the patient. Moving with the times, we need to change that and provide an option to the patient that if he doesn't is not in a position to walk up to the chemist because we must not think of chemist like in city of Mumbai or Delhi or Calcutta. Uh, in as you go down to class two and class three and class four cities, the chemists are further away. Yeah. And uh, patient convenience has to be borne in mind. One thing. Secondly, ensuring that uh, right medicine is dispensed. See, prescription is with doctor, but dispensing is with the chemist. Mm. So, right medicine is dispensed and no substitution takes place either in the, the online or offline pharmacy because we don't have medicine of same quality as of now. And thirdly, privacy of data. In a offline stores, compiling the data is very difficult. Yeah. And uh, all prescriptions, even if are kept by chemist, he will not part with it and mm. it's very difficult to tabulate. Online, the data becomes uh, easily accessible. Yeah. So these are the three key questions. But what we have not addressed is, uh, last three to four years, government has been discussing rules for e-pharmacy. Mm. Why we don't wake up till it becomes a crisis? Today, after Delhi High Court, Madras High Court has also banned this. We must address this question. Yeah. That, uh, like, uh, pharmacy stores uh, have given their input to the CDSCO. If pharmacies are given, as a manufacturer, we have given our inputs. And why still government has not been able to finalize these rules? Yeah. And more importantly, we don't have to reinvent the wheel because in the advanced countries, uh, the, uh, the substitution, the privacy of data, all this has been addressed. Yeah, there and are models. Yeah, no, no, that's a fair thing. Are there are models out there. We need to get on with it. Uh, you know, uh, holding back for technology is not going to work beyond a point. But I think that's a very valid point you made, Mr. Shah, that there was no yeah. need for any governments to sit on these regulations for so long when you have a situation where there's uh, hundreds of e-pharmacies already up and running. There's, uh, you know, investment coming in. And suddenly you're asked to shut shop because there are no rules. Come on, let's bring the rules quicker uh, than we need to. Thank you so much, Mr. Selvan and Mr. Shait. Of course, Mr. Shah for joining Thank us you. on the uh, conversation I want today. to record here one thing. Okay. Finally. Yes, yes, Mr. Selvan. Yeah. yeah, first, well said by DG saw that portal must be first of all created, that should be created by the government of India. So we are here we are enjoying the GST portal really very well for the past seven, eight months. Till GST portal, we can't, so many problems are there. Still, central government of India are not able to uh, rectify all those problems. First of all, we should have this, keep on this mind. First of all, all the prescriptions should be uploaded in a common portal. This is a very, 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 very important thing in this thing. Secondary is a privacy of the data. That should be very, very, very big question of that. So this, the, uh, this should be, we, uh, we, that should be keep on principle. So that assurance should be given by. One yes. more thing, Pangea report. That was happened in 2002. One year back, that report was taken by the FDA of U.S. government that shows that 500 illegal online portal are uh, selling in U.S. itself. So developed country also situation is like that. Okay. So how in India, what's going to be happen if it's going to be 
introduce any... Yeah, no, no, we need new regulations, uh, but, uh, but you know, uh, we have to see how workable they are. Even uploading all prescriptions online, you don't want to play with people's lives and their health Let's and create a situation which may make it that, more cumbersome. That, so, yeah, it all has to be lost. It will, it will be a challenge in the court of law. Okay. We'll wait and see where it goes. <laughs> but uh, again, uh, e-pharmacies uh, will have to find a way to survive uh, after two very crucial high court orders from Madras and Delhi. The ball is now in the government's court to come up with a set of regulations.